All right. Well, we appreciate everybody attending today. We're going to be covering converting AutoCAD to PNID. I'm going to get right to it because this is a not going to be the shortest webinar I've ever done. It'll take about an hour to go through that, and that's with me talking fairly quick and going through the steps. You will get the recording, so you can pause and do this stuff later and make sure you get everything. So I'm, I'm just going to blow through this and explain as much as I can because a lot of information here. We're going to start with understanding pipeline segments and pipeline groups. Just a little short review on that, what, how they work and everything, because that is important to know when you're converting the items from AutoCAD to PNID. On the AutoCAD side, we're going to do show you how to prepare that line work for conversion, but also your blocks and symbols as far as scaling and color and stuff like that. That, need, that needs to be taken into consideration before it comes into PID. On the Plant 3D side, we'll look a little bit at project setup. We're not going to go into the project setup. It's going to be more or less letting you know things you need to do in the project setup in order for it to convert correctly. And then we're going to do the converting of the line works and the objects of the, uh, into Plant 3D and PID. You'll receive some additional tips, tricks, and auto lists. And at the end of the webinar, I'm going to have a screen on to show you where you can download the auto list that I'm going to be utilizing. You do not have to use the auto list um, to do this. Uh, basically, I was able to do the entire conversion without any auto list of the drawing we're going to be looking at. It took me about an hour and five minutes. I was able to do it with one of the auto lists that I'm going to show you, which is what I call the free version, in about 40 minutes. And then there's going to be a version of auto list on the hub that you can download with it. I can do the whole drawing in about 25 minutes. So you can see there's a major difference between uh, which method you want to use, but that's up to you uh, which way you want to do it. But let's go ahead and get right to it. I'm going to go ahead and switch my screen here to AutoCAD PNID. So I'm actually in Plant 3D, but right here is an AutoCAD PNID drawing. It's already drawn because the first thing you need to understand are line segments and line groups in PNID because that's going to be very important with transferring the lines over. So right here you can see when I select this one piece of pipe here, the whole thing highlighted because that is a pipeline group. And if you may know whether you know it or not, the pipeline groups mean they share the same service and the same line number. So each everything in the pipeline group has one service, one line number, that's it. You can't have that can't set up different ones in a group. Now in a pipeline segment, as you notice right now, highlight I selected this piece of pipe so you can see there's the two grips there. That's a pipeline segment. This right here is a pipeline segment. This one's a pipeline segment. Each pipeline segment can have a unique size or spec. In this case, they're just different sizes. So pipeline segments are the parts that are going to have unique size, are going to have unique size and spec. The group has a global service and line number. And that comes into play when we're actually converting these things over. So what I'm going to do is come over here. I've got a drawing already started in P and ID. I'm going to go ahead and insert my drawing from AutoCAD. So it's I312018 here. It's an old drawing. I'm going to explode it, insert it at zero, zero, and just let it come in here. All right, so this is a drawing I actually drew back in 1992. So it's a very old AutoCAD drawing, uh, release 14, if I'm not mistaken. The only thing I've done to it is I've erased title block and anything that referenced a client or anything like that. But other than that, it is exactly like it was drawn in 1992. Now, the first thing when you pull these things over that you may have to do is do a little cleanup. That drawing in 1992 was a 24 by 36 drawing. This one's a 22 by 34. So, you know, I've got a little cleanup over here that I may need to do to um, get this thing to fit. So you may have some issues like that and getting it to fit in your title block. And that's just typical. That's not something you're going to get, be able to get away with. The thing to remember is there's no magic button to come into uh, bringing an AutoCAD drawing into PNID because 
AutoCAD doesn't have the intelligence or the SQL database that PNID has. So you may have to do a little cleanup to get it to fit. You may have to do a few other things. One of the things I like to do, this is more like what I use for an info tag in um, Plant 3D. So I'm gonna move these out of the way from the equipment and just kind of place them up at the top for use later, just a, a little bit of clarity. So I'm going to place them up there. And it's just a personal preference of being able to get that info tag up there. So once you've got it set up kind of clean this way, now we want to deal with those pipeline segments. And something you need to know about it is how you need to be familiar with the drawing. So in this particular case, I drew this, like I said, in 1992. I only use lines for piping so I and for signals. So I know that everything here is a pipeline that's gonna, is gonna be a line. So that one there is on a layer called P-1, which stood for piping primary, basically. These yellow ones are on a layer called P-2, I've got both P-2, which was piping secondary, and this was P-3, piping tertiary. So very simple layer system back then that I was using, but piping was on a P-1, 2, 3 for primary, secondary, tertiary. So I. That's how the equivalent to here today. I did not use polylines for any of my line work. I also used, now I did use polylines for this tank because it was a, not a typical tank. The pumps are a block. And the, this right here is, was a unique tank that was not common. I didn't use, so I just used polylines for that. But all the symbols are actually blocks. Every valve, every symbol in here even my line numbers here are, are a block with attributes so because that's the way i work it makes it pretty simple in this particular case to translate it if you use if you have an old drawing that where the valves are lines and not blocks it's going to take you a lot longer to do it and i don't even know if it'll be worth it uh, it may be faster to redraw it but if your old drawing has a lot of blocks in it and you know it's something where you can differentiate items even if it's by layer, it's gonna make your life easier. In this case, we're gonna start with the line work. So I'm gonna use quick select here, and I'm going to pick all the lines in the drawing because everything in the drawing that's a line, I know should be a piece of pipe. I'm gonna go ahead and isolate it. It's gonna be a piece of pipe or a um, piece of um, signal line. The key here, thinking in terms of pipeline segments, this should be a pipeline segment. No breaks, pipeline segments. Anything that's in here that should be a pipeline segment, I don't want them to, I want them to be a solid line or a solid P line in order to, to transfer over. Or else I'm gonna have, if I did this as is, this would be three different pipeline segments. None of them would be using the same, they wouldn't be the pipeline group, they that would just be a hassle. So I wanna get this stuff fixed. Now, a couple of things I'm gonna fix first is this right here has an instrument bubble in it. I do know that, so I'm gonna fill up those first just to get them connected. So I'm using AutoCAD's fill up command just to fix those corners. It's the only three places in the drawing that it actually happened. I just happened to know that because I've looked at this drawing a lot over the last week. Next, I'm going to use an AutoCAD command called join. I'm just typing it in, join. And with that, you want to pick a line segment, what's going to be a pipeline segment, and it will make it one line as long as they share the same X or Y or the, or the same angle. Now, once I select it, I can just start clicking it. I can do any type of selection process I want to with it. The key here is to pick a solid line that's or something that's going to be a solid line. If I accidentally pick something like this, where I've got the vertical as well as the horizontal, when I hit enter, notice it didn't do any of those horizontals. But what it did do was it made that one a P line. Because of doing that, I can't join it with the other line. So I'm going to go ahead and explode it. So the key with the join command at this point and stage of the game is to make sure you're picking just the line you want to make solid. And it's pretty easy to do quickly if you just think of it, if you uh, just keep in mind what you're picking. I picked something wrong there. So let's go ahead and do it this way. 
and you can go through an entire drawing and get everything into those pipeline segments. That includes instrument lines, but you got to do them, unfortunately, one at a time. I probably could have wrote a list routine, but it, it would have still been a lot of selection process. It would have been pretty complex uh, to do that. And maybe I will for the hub version. I don't know. I'm just right now, I'm just wanting to show you this is just straight AutoCAD that I'm doing right here. So once you've got these all joined together, wherever you have breaks, then we can do the next step of this, which is getting ready for the pipeline groups. Here, I'm going to go ahead and just pick those individually. Now, I think I, there's one up at the top. So once you got that done, you can see this will take less than a minute to do, do that. These I don't need to join because they're two different types of signal lines and stuff like that. But we kind of kind of go through and make sure everything is connected the way you want it. I want to use the join command one more time, but I'm going to just do everything at once. And what that did, now I got a pipeline segment. There's a polyline. There's a pipeline segment. There's a pipeline. So now I've got good pipeline segments for anything. But I have one mistake here. See, this one should be a pipeline segment of this and this should be a different pipeline segment i'm going to use the explode command and explode both of these and fix that so basically at this point and we're gonna to have to break it that was a mistake of mine that wasn't paying attention no it's separate all right so there's one so here i can say uh, join and I'm going to make this one pipeline segment. So you got to be aware of stuff sometimes, what you're doing. So now these can all be done together. So now i got one pipeline segment, pipeline segments. So that's your goal. Get these into pipeline segments so that, the, that where they're going to be sharing sizes and stuff. Some of these will automatically become pipeline groups. Next, I'm going to go ahead and end my object isolation. Next, we're going to talk about symbols and what they may need to be. So I'm going to go through all these and check them. I've already done that, but I know a couple of these have some issues. I'm going to come over here to this one and show you that when I, it's scale factor. When I look at a valve, notice over on the PNID side, those symbols come in at a quarter inch scale factor. When I look at a reducer, that symbol comes over at a one inch scale factor, I need to match or else I'm gonna have issues. So back over here, I can compare these. I just did those two because I know the reducers are wrong. But if I look at this valve, I back then I was using a quarter inch scale factor. So I was using the same system in 92 scale factor wise with my valves that they use in P9D. So that's not new to me, but notice my reducer is at an eighth inch scale factor. The one in P9D was at a one inch scale factor that's going to make it convert to a very teeny tiny reducer. So I want to fix that ahead of time. So I'm just going to go ahead and use select similar, select all my five of my reducers that are in here, and I want them to be a one inch scale factor. They look huge. I could literally leave them like that though and it wouldn't matter. But in my case, just to make it more comfortable since there's only five of them or since it's just the one block that I need to do this, I'm going to go ahead and block editor and just scale this one symbol down an eighth of an inch so that it looks correctly, the size correctly, but it's a one inch scale factor as far as the block is concerned and its insertion. So the other thing you have to be aware of scale factor wise negative scale factors. I don't have any in this drawing, but if you mirror something, it may have a negative scale factor. Rotation, that can affect how the block comes over. So you need to be aware of things like that. Most of the time with the negative scale factor and rotation though, you can probably easily fix because they'll stand out on the P once it's converted to PNID. But you want to prepare this stuff. The other part of this that you want to prepare, I've already done it with the pumps, but I did not do it with this tank. And that is P9D uses by block for color in symbols other than by layer. Now, I did not go through and fix all the valves and stuff because I don't want to use 
this valve and this valve as a symbol. I want to use the valves that come out of the box for P and ID. So I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about those. But this tank I'm not going to be changing. So this one I need to make sure that this piece and these two pieces here are set up to color by block. The other part is the layer. I want to get rid of that equipment layer, so I'm going to put it on layer zero because I don't want that to get locked into the symbol that I'm that I'm using where I can't purge it out. So I'm going to get that to layer zero and by block and escape. That worked for the most part, but this is actually a block. And so I had to do this to the pumps also. You got to go to the block editor. And just like with that, with it outside of here, this needs to be color by block. That is very important if you expect the painter to work in PNID or the layer colors like and, and all that to work correctly. So get the anything that's going to remain in your PNID. In this case, it's going to be a one off set symbol. Make sure you have it set to by block and not by layer. So it's bye bye block, hello by layer. Yes, I have a corny sense of humor. I'm sorry. Right now, the PNID, as far as AutoCAD is concerned, is ready to go. I'm ready to move this into plant into PNID. So I'm going to start with the line work for the um, project. Well, first I need to show you what you need to be aware of project setup wise. For instance, this line here is going to be that P-3 layer. That's the tertiary line. If the tertiary line doesn't exist in the PNID project, it won't be able, you won't be able to trans convert to it. So I'm going to, I've got a tertiary line here that's in my custom line. It's not there out of the box. Symbols like this electrical tracing symbol. I had to add that. So I've got a custom electrical tracing symbol already there out of the box. Now this one's set up pretty slick to where when I change the tracing on the pipeline, like if I made it heat tracing, it change it uses one symbol if i make an electrical tracing it uses a different symbol but the, that symbol is controlled <clears throat> out of by it has to exist if i want to make this use this symbol then i have to make have that symbol already in here so there's otherwise it's just a one-off symbol but even a one-off symbol has to have something to convert it to that matches so you have to make sure you have any custom sim <coughs> symbols created in your project ahead of time but it's a one-time thing same is true with list uh, you can see this is using process water drain caustic i mean that those services need to be available pi fi all those need to be available all those some of this stuff you can type in without having it in the list some of it's best to have it in there so you need to have in your project the symbols and any list and things like line types you're going to be using already added to the project. Once that is done, and usually if it's the same drawings from the same person you're, you're con converting, you probably can get all that done one time for the rest of your life. But once that has been done, you're ready to convert it. So we're gonna start with the primary lines. I'm simply gonna select the primary line, right click, select similar. It selects, since that was a polyline, it selected all the P lines, on layer p-1 did not select the line so i'm going to go ahead and select this line here and do the same thing of select similar so that it selected all the lines all the p lines that are on layer p1 right click convert to pnid object and i'm going to pick a pipeline segment primary line segment out of the box one hit okay every one of those lines just got converted to a primary line segment. Now, the ones that we're touching are part of the same group, but each one is still a primary, is still going to be a segment, but it's all part of the same group. But it's, it transferred everything instantly in one. So I can do the same thing with my secondary. I'm going to select similar. You can see I've got another one here that's a P line. So I'll select similar. Now that I've got them all done, convert to P and ID object. That one's secondary. So I'm able to do globally every one of these for a particular line to top line segment and not have to do them one at a time. That's what you'll see if you watch videos by Autodesk and some of these others out there. They're doing them one at a time. I can do it globally, but that's because I have these things divided up by layer. So the, that helps me to select them to where all my piping is now done. It's been converted. Well, it's not done, but it's been converted. I'm going to do these electrical ones. 
I can do them at the same time. There's a P line. Here's a line. Whoops, didn't get the line. I got the symbol. So I'll grab this P line, this line, right click, select similar. It got everything. That's going to be a signal line. That's my electrical signal. And I converted them all, and they're all individual lines. So it works the same way. Now, this one here is a, pie, is a, uh, is a supply line. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. I know this one is just line work. And we'll convert it. So one of the things you got to be aware of when you're converting stuff is what is on that layer because doing the select similar is by layer. When I converted that one, this leader line happened to be on the same layer. So it turned that into an instrument line, which I don't want. So you've got to be aware of stuff like that. In this case, I'm just going to delete it because it's going to be dealt with later anyways. But I got one more control valve with a leader on it right here. This happens to be the only pneumatic line. Back in 1992, we couldn't do the 2D pneumatic lines. We got to do 1D. So we put a block on them. So when I convert, when you have situations like that, again, it's just knowing your drawing. When I make this the pneumatic signal line, it worked. But I still have this block here. That I don't need. In this case, that's the only one. And now I've got all my line work, whether it's a pipe or signal line, has been converted at this point. I'm ready to move on to the next part of that, which is AutoCAD has not got any idea about flow direction whatsoever. If I come over here, you can see by my flow arrow, I've got some lines that are flowing the wrong direction. Now, with AutoCAD PID out of the box, I would select this one, right click, schematic line edit, reverse the flow. That's, I'm going to be doing that over and over again. This is where the list routines come in handy. So, this is, I call them PID tools. This is the free download that everybody will have access to. And these are ones that are a little bit more advanced that are available for people who are members of the Hagerman Hub. We'll cover some of these as we need them. Right now, there's one that everyone has access to that I made called PID Reverse Flow. That's the name of the command. When I click PID Reverse Flow. I literally can just don't go in here and start reversing flows of anything I need to. So like here, you can see the arrow, the pumps backwards, and I can just kind of go through here. I'm looking for anything that may be backwards right there. See the arrow? That one's backwards, so I can reverse the flow and correct them. Here's another one right here. Once I've got, I'm happy with my reverse. Here's one feeding this pump. Once I've got those flows all the right direction, I do not need the arrows right here from the original anymore. So once I'm satisfied with my flow directions, you notice so I just picked one right after another. I didn't have to keep repeating the command. That was why I created it. Uh, I'm going to go to Quick Select. Pick the block references, the name that block happens to be named arrow. I'll pick it, delete them, they're gone. I don't need those flow arrows from the original PID anymore. So I got rid of them. So I got my flows correct. The next thing you'll notice when I'm looking at these groups here, this is a group. This is another pipeline group. I've got another pipeline group right here. There's three that came over as groups. When they touch, and they're converted, they come over as groups. Normally, for me, the way I do it, that would be okay, because I would probably have all that at the same pipeline number. But in this particular company I worked for at that time, this is pipeline number 6200, 6201. Each one of these segments are a different group because they have a different pipeline number. So I need to remove them from the group. Here's the AutoCAD PID method out of the box. Select it, right click, Edit S-Line Group, Remove, and I'll pick this one, and then hit Enter, and so Enter again. So now I have two pipeline groups, therefore they can have different line numbers because they're two separate groups. Again, a lot of right-click and picking, so your freebie you can download at the end of here. I added two commands. One's called Pipe Group, group Remove, PID Group Remove, the other Group Add. I don't need the group add. I just figured since I'm making a remove, I might as well make an add because I was just changing one thing in the routine. I'm going to use the group, and literally I can just come in here, pick it, pick it, and 
pick it, hit enter, and then over here, I'll do it again, hit enter, pick it, and pick it. So now I've got all my pipeline groups separated in a nice, quick, easy method. So there's the next part of it. At this point, I'm ready to start dealing with the tag on the piping. Equipment, valves, anything else that gets a tag is not so simple. Actually, the pop lines are pretty simple because of the way they're divided up into line segments and line groups. I can actually deal with that without having to go to assign tag. So the first thing I'm going to do so you can see it at work is I want to move these up just these six so you can actually see it because I've got basically three different methods I'm going to show you here. Uh, so I'm going to move that up. Now what I want to do is put the annotation here. Of course, I could use the annotate pipeline tag and then place it right there. I could use the PNID annotate. This is pick that one, tell it pipeline tag and place it. So that's one method I could use. The method I have given you with the one that you can download anybody can is this PID anno line right here and like I said these will work in regular PID drawings say not just this one but PID anno line allows me to come in here tell it the distance if I want to inline and make it zero I'm going to leave it I like mine an eighth inch up which is the default and now I can just come in here and start placing my annotation in here so that gets that in there a little bit quicker I'm going to show you a third method later uh, but this one is good for here. So now I'm able to do, we'll show you the AutoCAD way. I want to get all my pipeline segment information. That can be done more in a global method. If you look at this, every single one of these are carbon steel 150. So because of that, I'm going to select one piece of pipe, right click and select similar. That gets all the piping. Over in the properties palette, simply change it to carbon steel 150. I'm using the out of the box tags on the new ones, which is different than the ones out uh, that are in the drawing originally, but I'm converting this over to the new system. If I wanted to use this system, I could set that up. But in this case, I'm using the out of the box. You can see all my everything got set to carbon steel 150. After that, you got to do it by size. So for instance, these two, this one, if you notice I'm doing this, before I put any symbols in because it makes it easier. I don't have to worry about any other segments and groups. So this is all half inch. So I'll set my half inch. Go over here, this one's one inch. These over here, I just know my drawing. You kind of got to look at it first, but set your sizes. Get them over there. It's going to be a lot faster because there's no magic button for this. This is as close as you get to a magic button. This one's two inch. This one's two inch. This one's two inch, this one's two inch. That looks like all the two inch, so we'll go ahead and set those. Boom, two inch. Only the other size left in this particular drawing is I've got three inch right here, which actually I just set to two inch, but the reducer's not in there yet. We'll go ahead and set these to three inch. And I've got this one here. So once I've got that selected, I'm gonna set all those to three inch. And it looks like they're all done, but it's not a bad idea to check yourself. Go to the data manager, look under pipeline segments, and you can see I got all the spec. I missed one piece of pipe. That's why it's a good idea to check yourself. So I'm going to go see what that one is. We'll zoom in on it, and then we can close the data manager. It was the vent here. I missed that one. So I'll grab it, set it to three inch. Now I've got all my piping size and spec done. And as you see in these tags, that's already showing up. But we're going to concentrate first on these. Okay. The out of the box method. We'll just do the, these two down here. Two ways I could do these. I'll do this one with an assigned tag. Make it drain because since it's a group, they'll all be the same. And this will be $63.99. I don't need to place the annotation. So that one got done. Another method is I can right click, go to edit S line group, and set the service, in this case the PW, and then set the line number, in this case to 6257. 
Either way will work out of the box. If you don't use list, that's your only options. However, we'll do it on just these six. I gave you for free PID, line number, and service. This will only work on lines. I want to do the service first. And with that, I can say this one's going to be a drain. So that one's drain. That one's drain. When I'm done picking all my drains, hit enter. I'll do it again. This one's going to be processed water, so PW. So that one's processed water. That one's processed water. So I'm able to do it by service fairly quickly. The line numbers are not quite as quickly, but at least I don't have to keep hitting enter and right click and all that. So line number, this will be 6268. This will be 6267. And you can see fairly fast. Just to let you know, I can't remember if I mentioned this at the beginning. Well, I think I did. Uh, using this method took me about 45 minutes, not using any of the hub stuff to do this particular drawing completely converted. About 40 minutes, I'd say. Uh, using just the AutoCAD method like we used down here, this is over an hour. 25 minute version though is using some additional tools I have for members of the hub. There's one I created called PID Convert Tag. Now this is gonna be a couple of weeks before this is on, about two or three weeks on the hub because I've got some tweaking to do to make it do a little bit more than what you're going to see in here, which will be explained on that version when done a video. If I do PID convert tag, this is slick. I'm going to pick this attribute, pick that, bada bing, bada boom. No typing, just go through, pick them. It's actually getting the line number and the service from the attribute. It doesn't get the size or the spec. Those can only be done the way I showed you just a minute ago. It will not let me, I can't get that information and pass it to the properties palette so that in any way. So, but these I can. So I just came up with a little method for getting that information. It's that much less typing. There may be a little cleanup, like on that one, that is necessary. Where I pick determines where it's putting the annotation. But it's actually deleting the attribute version from AutoCAD, pulling in the line number and the service and assigning it to the pipe. That is a big time saver. So if you're a member of the hub, that may be something you want to get right there. So there's all my PNID stuff, my line work converted over and services. It is done. Put your cursor on it, you can see it's giving me the correct information. So now we're going to talk about the equipment. The equipment, I'm going to do the pumps first. Again, they have to be in the project to work. I can do all three pumps. When they're a block, I can do them all at the same time. Right click, convert them. This will be equipment, pumps. There's my centrifugal pump. We'll hit OK. They're converted. They're done, and each one's an individual piece of equipment. So when they're a block, you can do them all at one time. You do not have to do them one at a time, like the world has told you in the past. When they're not a block, such as this one, which is a polyline, I'm even going to include a block. But if they include a block and a line or polyline, that's a one-off symbol. It's not gonna make, you can't do them multiple. If I was to do this, plus the pumps at the same time, the pumps would have been part of this tank. So by doing it, that's why I did the pumps separate. These are gonna be all one. I'll right click, convert to PNID object. This is a tank, it happens to be a dome roof tank. We'll hit okay. It needs to know a insertion point. And there you go. So if it's asking for an insertion point, it's doing a one-off symbol, you've got a line in there. If it doesn't, then it says, oh, these are all the same block. I know the insertion point. If they're two different blocks, it would make it a one-off symbol. So you've got to be aware of that type stuff. But now I've got all my equipment in here. Assigning tag and equipment, there's no faster way than the way out of the, out of the box. Assign tag, this one's 7920. I'm going to go ahead and place my annotation at the same time. So I'm not going to be able to speed up the assigning tags of equipment. However, 
the annotation of equipment. This one's 7930. That will be something I can speed up of the vessel info tags, stuff like that. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Let's finish assigning the tag here. This one's 7910. I just have these memorized. Like I said, I've kind of practiced this a few times, so I know what all I have here. This is also 7910 for the tank. And if you looked at the ones up above here, you can see that's the same numbers. So assigning the equipment tag, a little bit slower, slower no, no different than out of the box. However, the info tags, I'm gonna, I've got a little, couple of little shortcuts. I'm gonna do the vessel info tag first and place it right up here. This is the way I do my info tags myself. And then the one, because that's by itself, no, no big time saver there, but the pumps, once I place the first pump info tag, I'm going to show you a little trick here. I can select this pump, call this Rick's Tricks. I don't care what you call it. Select that pump, hit enter, and it's placing another info tag for that pump. Pick this one, hit enter. There's that pump. So you can kind of do multiple pieces of equipment, multiple, a little bit quicker that way. After that, I can come up here and just double click the old one because it's the description. I just want to get it from there to here. That's the only piece of information. So not worried about the rest of it the, that goes to the info tag. That's going to be have to have to be done the same way as anything else. Other piece of equipment in here. Now, if I would have had information there, then I probably would have come up with another method for copy and paste using the properties palette or something, but it's not too difficult. But this saves me a lot of typing at least to be able to just do that. And that's basically all you can do about equipment and those tags. There's not any shortcuts other than the copy and paste the way I just did it. Now, the other thing about equipment is your piping connecting up to it. Uh, you will see I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this arrow here and this arrow here because I don't want those uh, for later. But your equipment, you'll notice this one connected up, this one connected up. They connect insertion and quadrants, but everything else did not connect. This one actually connected up too because it's on the quadrant. So I'm going to have to connect these up. I could do it after a validation or I can do it at this point i'm going to do it right now i've learned snap it's probably going to get in your way so i just turned it off i know on the pumps it's the same thing on all pumps these three lines are not connected so basically once you've got your equipment you're piping in there you may need to go through where you will need to go through and connect up some lines if this one wouldn't have had these three lines here and just been the uh such a discharge they would have been connected and that would have been good to go on the tank that's going to be a little bit more because there's more nozzles but also when you connect the pump to the tank you'll get your nozzle now in this particular case that's what i want instrument lines do not get nozzles so that's what i want on those and it's just literally clicking the same spot now that one i missed because my o snap just got in the way i did not realize i had done had my o snap on i thought i'd turned it off so o snap will get in the way so make sure it's turned off when you're doing this but you can go through here and get everything connected this one right here including even though it's on the quadrant it just does not connect up now this one here i don't really want a nozzle so once it's got the nozzle on there you've got all the same things you would normally have i'm just going to highlight them all you'd have all the same things you would normally have and abilities so this one is pretty yeah this is probably the most uh time consuming thing you would do i'm gonna go ahead and change these uh just because i'm picky that's probably the most time consuming thing you do is go through and connect up your equipment but once it's done it's done and it's that not my equipment python's now ready for whatever's next which is my symbols i'm going to start with the valves I'm going to do a couple of different methods here just to show you how to do it. I'm going to start with quick select and I'm going to go and pick all my gate valves. I just happen to know they are named V gate. That was what I named them back there. So that's a normally open gate valve. 
It selects all of them in one fell swoop, no matter what layer they're on, and I'm going to isolate those. Obviously, these are not the blocks out of the box. There's some that have some text, like sill water. That's going to be gone. So if I need that text there, I'm probably going to either need to add it later or copy it, uh, with a, you know, put it into a piece of text or something before I do the conversion. In my case, I'm not going to worry about that. Just pointing out that text in those blocks is going to be gone. Nothing you can do about that. So you need to be aware of that. Select all those valves, right click, convert to PNID object. Now, I want these valves to be the ones out of the box. That's not the way it's going to do this. Initially, it will, when I pick a gate valve here, it will make it the same symbol, but it thinks it's a gate valve. But those don't look the same, and I don't want that. So I'm going to make it something different to start with. I'm going to just pick a ball valve. So obviously, by looking at it, those are not ball valves. That's what I mean. It's not going to change the symbol. Right now, it's like the tank. It's a one-off symbol. But I can now come in here, select all of it, right-click, substitute, and change it to the gate valve. And now it's using the out-of-the-box symbol of a gate valve. And it's actually a gate valve. So I got rid of the one that was in the drawing and used the one that I wanted to, it's just a normally open gate valve. So that's the first part of it. Let's go ahead and get the gate closed ones. I can do it with a substitute. This is my point here. I can do it with a substitute or I can do it with anything that causes a graphic style change. So in this case, notice V gate's not here anymore. V gate C, those are my closed ones. I'll go ahead and isolate those. So there's only four of them, but they were on two layers, so that's why I had to use Quick Select. When I convert these, I, this time I'm going to go ahead and convert them to a gate valve, because that's what they are. But then I'm going to change the open-close state, which does a graphical change, to normally closed. And so now this is the out-of-the-box normally closed gate valve. So anything of a substitute, anything of a graphical change, will cause the, this to, to change to the out-of-the-box valve. Let's do one more, uh, just different method. All my check valves are on the same layer, so select similar, isolate those. And for these, there is no normally open closed state for a check valve, so I couldn't use that method. So I'm going to use, I'm just going to change it to a gate valve. I always change it to the wrong thing first. That's the key. And then substitute to the valve that I want it to be. And that way I get exactly what I want. All right. A lot of clicking there. Right click, click selects, all that stuff. So I came up with another tool for you. It's one called Isolate Symbol. Now this works on both blocks and symbols. Let me show you what I mean. If I came in here on this valve and I said select similar, Notice it picked the gate valve. It would have picked producers, the electrical tray, anything that was a, it would have picked all the symbols, period. This one, though, is keyed to the actual symbol itself. So if I picked the gate valve, it gave me all the gate valves isolated. I'll go ahead and end the object isolation. But it also works on blocks. That's the main reason I created this. I just had an added benefit with the symbol. I want to do my electrical tracing insulation here. So there's all my electrical tracing. I'll select it, right click, convert to PNID object. Nothing I can do to make that any faster because we've got to come in here and tell it this is a specialty item of insulation and it makes that change. Now, if you remember when I showed you this one earlier, this custom one, it works off the piping. So to make this actually work, I'm going to have to go get all the piping that has that insulation, and it's going to have the electrical tracing. Once I have it all selected, then there's one there. That means this will uh, this one here and this one here it looks like all of it. Now I can just change it over here. I got something that is not, see I picked up a valve or something it looks like. So now it kind of messed myself up. That sometimes crossing can get in the way. So you got to be careful not to pick an arrow or something like that if you're going to do it globally. 
There you go. Let's see if I get it all now. Boom, 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 boom. That one didn't need any line segment that has the insulation symbol on it because they're all in this particular drawing electrical tracing. We'll change it to trace the electrical. It updates my symbol. They're all done. So you can see it does, it's just a matter of getting the right ones. I'm not going to do all of them because you get it. I just want to show you a couple uh, here. I'm going to go ahead and do the isolate symbol. These two are using the same block even though they're going to be two different symbols. Be aware of stuff like that. Sometimes it may not be global. In this particular case, when I convert this one, I'm going to convert it to a steam trap. And we'll go ahead and then substitute. I should have did something other than the steam trap. Now I'm going to have to change it twice because I did that. Since it's only one of them, I can only do them one at a time. This one here is going to be converted to instrument air. So this is my first instrument. So it's going to be my instrument air. I'm going to go ahead and make it the pit top tube. So I only have to do this one time because then I change it to instrument air and it's done. So basically, all you got to do is pick each symbol and convert it any method you want to. I'm going to go ahead and make this in the steam. The um, go ahead and do this because I think there's the only one left in here that I haven't done is this one piece, which is a Y strainer with a shutoff. And now it's everything in here as far as piping symbols have been done, except for the reducers. Well, I didn't get the diaphragm seal and stuff like that, um, but you get the idea. I don't have to go through and do all of these. So I'll leave, I'm going to leave those off. But the reducers are unique. So diaphragm and valve there are different. But this right here, these reducers are unique. So I'm going to again isolate the symbol of the reducers. You can see there's five of them. Let's go ahead and first go ahead and convert these. I'm going to convert them to a centric reducer. And then turn around and substitute those with a concentric because that way I get the out of the box symbol. All right, here's what's different about a reducer. If you remember, reducers make a line segment change where I can change the size. If you look at this right now, this one says two inch. And right here, if I put my cursor on this side of the reducer, it says two inch. So let's go ahead and just do an assign tag just to change it to three inch. And as you can see, it changed it on this side too, but that's not just because of it being the tag. I'm going to get rid of that. To put my cursor there, that one's three inch. Put my cursor here, that one's three inch. So there's something going on here. And if you look at the segment, notice there's no dot anywhere on the reducer because it didn't break up the segment. That's still one line segment. So therefore, I can't change the size or the, or the um spec if I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these because they're basically going to be changing when I do the when I do the reducer. So I need to fix the reducer. It's an easy fix. There's nothing I can do. You saw I changed the from eccentric to concentric. That didn't fix it. There's only one way to fix it globally. I've got to make sure my ortho is on. I'm going to do this, so make sure your ortho is on. I'm going to move all the reducers using AutoCAD's move command an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to select them again and move them right back an eighth of an inch. They connect to the pipes. Notice all of a sudden I've got line segments put appearing because now they're connected correctly. And now I can make this one which is a three inch right now is what it says. So this one, this one, this one, and this one are all two inch lines. Let's do them globally. This one here and this one here should be a three inch line. We'll do those globally. Now I'm gonna use this time the PID annotate. This one is on the hub version. It replaces to where you don't need the PID and a line from the hub version because it will do the same thing as far as the line numbers itself, but it does a little bit more as you'll see in a minute. 
So there you can see those are the two inch. That's now three inch. So everything is working the way I want to. I haven't done this one yet. I'll go ahead and put this one on here, which says three inch. This one right here should be a four inch line, not a three inch. So that fixes all my reducers. Moving them, make sure your ortho's on, and then move them back. They hit the lines and they update at that point. Now, here's some, another benefit for those who are using the hub version with the PID annotate. I'm going to come in here, pick the reducer, and it annotated all my reducers in one. So you can see there, I missed a three inch right there. That one should be three inch. Nice to be able to see those reducer information there. So they're all annotated. That's the nice thing about this one. I'm going to pick this valve, gate valve. Every gate valve in the drawing has now been annotated. Pick the check valve. Every check valve has been annotated. So I can annotate the objects globally in a drawing. Like I said, this will work in regular PNID drawings as well and not have to do them one at a time. In regular PNID drawing, usually they're in there as you place them, but they're not when you convert them. So that's where this can comes in handy is to be able to get those annotated. Now my valves, as you see, have question marks. They did not get a number. They each have to be a unique number. Here's another little trick. I'm going to go back to the data manager and I'm going to go to hand valves. I'm going to export these to Excel. So we'll go ahead and put these on my S drive right here so I can find them easily. I'm going to do active mode only because that's all I care about in this case. And then we'll come over here and update and open up the Excel file. All right, here's my number. A column. I'm going to just make this top one. When I don't care about the numbers right now. I just want to get them in there. So I'm going to make this one plus one of the one above it. So the Excel rules of formulas work. Got a unique number now where it's incrementing each one by one because initially I just need to be able to know which one's which. And now when I import this in, Pulling it from the S drive. It doesn't pull in the, oh yeah, data manager. It doesn't pull in the formula. It pulls in the result of the formula. So I can just say, yep, let's accept them all. And now every valve in the drawing has a unique tag. So I've killed that one pretty easily. So that kind of gives you an idea of how you can do this. The only things we have left right now are the instrument bubbles and the off-page connectors and the control valves. We'll start with the instrument bubbles. Now for this one, I'm going to get them all in one whack by just going to block reference and I'm going to get the name. I'm going to make this as painful as possible, painless as possible. All right, I am not, this isolated. So I didn't use the isolate object because they're each different blocks. Now I don't want to lose the text. Remember when I convert it, I lose all the text. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm just going to put it at an angle here. I'm going to turn off my ortho to where they're close to the original so I can see them. Now I'm going to use the quick select and do a selection of previous. I'm not pointing out AutoCAM commands because you should know those already. So that gets all of those. And I'm going to convert them all in one fell swoop to the wrong general instrument. I'm just going to make it this very top one because none of those are that one. But they look the same. Now, for the sake of time, I am not going to update these textually. So I'm going to just delete these because I would do them all the same way I'm about to do the others. But I just wanted to go ahead and speed up some time here so we're not too much longer. Uh, the first thing I need to do is I want to make all these that are circles to fill the screen. Not the, right now, it thinks they're all the same auxiliary accessible DCS. So just getting the circle versions here. Once I have those, I'm going to substitute those for the fill discrete. Notice the dots in them. That lets me know I've got the one out of the box. These right here, 
These three are inaccessible PLCs, I believe. Let's see, we'll substitute. And there it is, the accessible PLC. We'll get those changed. These two are accessible PLCs. So we'll at least get the blocks correct on these because there's only two more after those two. That's these two square ones, which are DCSs inaccessible. All right, so I at least got those on there. At this point, all you can do is what you see here of going, you know, this one's going to be PI 7922, that type of thing. I'm just going to type in 7922 to get one in there. So that's your only option out of the box. Okay. However, I did create this copy to clipboard thing here, and this will save you a lot of time. For that, I can pick copy to clipboard. I'm going to pick the PI. Now I can take the, all the PIs. Got to do it by type and then by number. I did one that I shouldn't have done there. Uh, see, that's PI. The only other PI is right here. And I'm going to make these type. Control V, paste it in there. It's done. Now I'll do the FIs, which I accidentally picked one of those. So we'll go FI, and it's this one, this one, and this one. So you can kind of see, copy and paste. Is all I'm doing. So I copy the X, Y, A, C, and then I can pick that one, that one, and then we'll do the numbers for those that we have here. Um, this is again just to show you a little shortcut. So here I can do it by group. I'm going to do 7930, which are these three. So I copied them with the copy to clipboard, and then I can do so the only uh, that's pretty much your only option for these instruments there's no way to because they're the only way to access these is either through a sign tag or which it pulls up a dialog box or you can access them with um the properties palette because of that it's basically a copy and paste in the properties palette to make it work so those are the only ones i'm going to do they all work the same you can see I was pretty quickly able to get these in there. I'm gonna get rid of those that I don't want. So I've got some that just haven't been done yet, but that's to save some time. They do all do the same way. The only other part here to show you, off-page connectors, if you've used the PNID, you already know they are a beast. So don't try to convert them. Just go ahead and use the out of the box ones or any custom ones you created. And I'm getting rid of some arrows here that I don't want to see. That's not what I meant to do, just because I don't like arrows on the end. And then after that, I'll go ahead and do just a few here and then we'll take questions. Um, this is the non engineering one out of the box, so I can actually just place them. So there's nothing unique about this. That can be done. I could use my copy to paste to copy those connection numbers over. I could use, um, you know, whatever else I need to as far as the, the origin and destination. I could copy those over by copy and paste. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, this one, we spent about an hour on this so far. And that was including some introduction and talk. That one should be a hose line. A, uh, there you go. So that one's done actually. So you can see it's a little bit of work that may be in there because there's no magic button. But this drawing is completely updated as far as the symbols and stuff like that. If I go to quick select here and I pick a block reference and name, you can see uh, there is pretty much well, the control valve I didn't do. I forgot to do that one. I'll go do that. And some of these need to be purged out probably. Well, I haven't deleted these yet. We'll go ahead and delete these to get them out of there. Let me do the control valve since I forgot about it. One little note on control valves. I'm going to just move this one if I ever can get it to pick. Reason you don't convert, I suggest not converting a control valve. If I convert this to a control valve, Inline control valve. It's a control valve now, but I can't change it to a different body style. I cannot change it to a different actuator. I lose that ability. It's just a control valve. 
So my theory is go ahead and just, usually there's not that many on a drawing. I would just go ahead and place the control valve in here, give it the number, and then you can exit, change the actuator. So the control valves are kind of unique. There's nothing you can do to really speed that up. I'm just going to go ahead, since I know that one's a diaphragm at 7912, I'll just erase it so I can place the new one in there, put it here, and it's a 7912. And now I've done replace the two that I have. Uh, but at this point, if I purged out everything, there should be no AutoCAD blocks left in here from the AutoCAD drawing. There should be no uh, layers left over from it unless I chose to. So you can see I got this die seal one because I didn't do the die seal. I didn't do the valve. So I've got those two instruments in there, but everything else is gone. That's because I didn't do those to save a little time. And then the layers, because I've got the die seal in there, I'm still going to have the eye instrument. I have text in here because I've got two pieces of text up here that I may want to keep. But that's it. Like I said, using the out of the box methods, that drawing there would take me about an hour and five minutes. That's not with me pushing it as hard as I can. That's doing it at a comfortable pace. I pushed it as hard as I could to get it to fit in the, today. If I use just the free ones of this webinar that you're going to be able to download, that takes me about 40 minutes. And if I use just the ones of the hub, which basically includes all of this, but these extra ones, but I use this instead of uh, doing the analyze stuff. That took me 25 minutes, not even pushing it. You can see you can cut your time down quite a bit, a lot faster than trying to redraw these. Uh, let me get back, show you where you can download those. So let's see, we'll go back to the screen here and right here. For some reason, it did. there we go. You can download the risk list routines. There's two versions of PID tools that we use. The free version, which anybody can get to, will be right here. You can download it right there. Uh, and it has these commands that you see up there of the analyze, the reverse flow, isolate symbol, group add, group remove, line number, and service. Then the hub version has all the same commands. It has an additional one called PID Annotate, which basically replaces that one. You don't use that one at all. Uh, this one does that one, plus it will annotate all the valves globally, um, all the reducers globally. Then Convert Tag, that's the one I was using to copy the line number from the text or an attribute and, uh, and apply it to the actual line, and it would erase the old one and put in the new one and then copy to clipboard, which is what it says. Pick a piece of text, pick, it, pick an attribute, it will copy it to the clipboard, then you can select what all you want to paste it to in the properties palette. So those are available there. And additionally, we have some training that's available. Uh, we have a quick start class for PID and an advanced class. Those are one day and two days, and then we have two Plant 3D News or an advanced, which you can find on our website and take it anytime you'd like. Brett, are there any questions that I need to answer? And I'm going to go back to the previous screen so you can write down that free version if you need it for now. Yeah, Rick, there is one outstanding question in the question panel. Well, I'm glad it was outstanding. What is <laughs> it? It is an outstanding question. Uh, can you tell me what it is? Uh, yeah, I sure. Know. If I put it on uh, my sorry, screen, I don't know if you can see that panel or not. Okay, here's the question. Uh, is there a workaround for valve tagging other than going one by one when they have to have specific tags that cannot be done in the export import process that you showed? No, because when they when you convert a valve over, it actually doesn't add any tag. If you convert anything over, it gives it, everything's gonna be question marks. The only reason it had the V in there is because I had that set up as a default code in my valve, so it actually picked up the defaults. Uh, so that would work, but other than that, it's basically one at a time, uh, probably easiest in the data manager. 
but that yeah that's it's, it, line numbers would be the same way if we couldn't control them by segment and service and line number a group because we can do line number by group and service there are commands we can use to add that without going to assign tag so that's the issue whenever you to assign a tag you can only do that two places and that's either in assigning the tag itself which brings up a dialog box which means you can't do it globally or in the properties palette and tags in the properties palette automatically bring up the um, dialog box unless you do it by that code and stuff like that so and then it's individually in there if they're unique uh, i was able to get around that by at least getting the number with that excel tool but for the most part uh, there's just not another way to do it and that that's the same reason why i didn't do it with the equipment pipe type pi pipeline tags are different and unique and so it gives me some other methods through those group codes to be able to assign those so that made it that that was why they were a little bit different and i could come up and i had a method for doing that quickly any other questions All right, I hope you enjoyed the webinar and I will turn this back over to Ashley. Thanks, Rick um, and Brett, and thanks everyone for attending today. Um, just a reminder, you will receive a follow-up email tomorrow, which will contain a link for the recording of today's presentation. Also, another reminder, a short survey will pop up as we close down today. Um, thanks for attending and have a great day, everyone.